Okay, well, my name is Melanie, um, <clears throat> and I'm talking about budget cuts in art. Um, for the past couple of years, schools have been experiencing budget cuts and then are faced with the question on where to make those cuts. Some see it fit to make those cuts in the art program. Today I'm here to talk to you guys on why they should, why the government should keep funding the art program and make the cuts in other programs such as sports. Tonight when I talk about art, I mean all kinds of art, as in sculpting, drawing, painting, making music, singing, and dancing. <clears throat> My proposition is funding art programs in schools can be more beneficial than funding sports programs. Art programs teach students <coughs> how to express themselves in an alternative way, as well as help motivate at-risk at students, whereas sports does not have the same effect, it also can have a negative effect. <clears throat> First, art programs are a way of students to express themselves. Art is an irreplaceable way of understanding and expressing the world. There are some truths about life that can be expressed only as stories, or songs, or images. Art delights, instructs, consoles, and educates our emotions, said Donna Gioa, a poet and national endowment <clears throat> for the arts chairman. Art is a form of expression. It allows students to share their innermost thoughts and how they feel or what they're thinking. Art can often be someone's voice. And a study done <clears throat> on students in visual arts class showed that students developed a mind for personal expression through their chosen medium, meaning that students are able to find their voice in the form of visual art that they choose. They can also <clears throat> express their likes and their dislikes. Their art can express something they stand for, something they love. It can express something they oppose or something they strongly dislike. It can tell them their story or where they came from can also tell where they want to go. <clears throat> art is a form of expression, <clears throat> expression in a way that you often can't express in words or be tested on. Secondly, art has been proven to decrease the motiv to increase the motivation to do better, continue in schools with at-risk students. In an article by Jessica Hoffman Davis, she argues that students aren't reached by that aren't reached by academics are often reached by the arts. There are so many students who don't always do the best in school and aren't very good in sports, but are able to show their strengths in a form of art. In a program <clears throat> called the Youth Arts Development Project, which is a project that engages at-risk students in art programs, showed that the participating students began to work better with others, as well as follow through and finish the tasks at hand. They, were also, they also showed to have better attitudes towards school. Oftentimes, at, the at-risk students are students that come from low-income families. The Chicago Arts Program in Education partnered with high-poverty schools in Chicago. This program showed to close the gap between high- and low-income students. Students' involvement in arts has improved students' overall education. Third, funding in sports can have a negative effect on students' health and their education. Students' health can be negatively affected. Sports are physical and often result in injuries. There are many different sports injuries that a student can endure. They can endure acute injuries that are caused by student trauma, overuse injuries which are caused when you don't give your injury enough time to heal. It can also cause stress fractures, catastrophic sports injuries, concussions, growth plate injuries, which can damage or cause their bone to deform. All injuries can affect a student's attendance and academic performance. Sports are intense and require a lot of competition. This puts extra stress on the students to do well, not only in school, but to do well in their games. The stress comes from their teachers and their coaches, parents, and now their peers to win. It also causes stress <coughs> um, on the student because now they have to juggle school and sports activities. Stress can lead to depression and or violence. Oftentimes, sports will trample over school because playing sports is something they enjoy or something they love, causing their performance in school to fall. In conclusion, funding arts instead of funding sports in school can be more benef beneficial for a student. Sports can lead to a student's sports can lead to a student's health issue, whether it be a bodily injury or stress from trying to keep up in school to meet the standards of their coaches and peers. 
whereas art <clears throat> gives students the chance to be able to express themselves and motivate students to not only do better in school, but to complete their education while not causing any harmful injuries. All right, the topics identified clearly, Melanie, and I thought that uh, you had a, a, a clear statement of the proposition. Early on, it sounded like there was almost going to be a, a claim of policy here, but you did back off when you phrased the proposition so that it was phrased as an issue of fact. Uh, the notion that it's uh, sports or something else that has to be cut is a presupposition here, and I think that it may in fact be a valid presupposition but I still think you need some proof that uh, when faced with cuts that uh, the sports always wins out and that the arts programs are the ones that suffer I think you need a lot more uh, support for that particular uh, assumption as we're getting into the argument the secondary issues were partially labeled at the beginning of the speech so I think it'll be easy to listen to uh, you signposted those ideas as you got to them that was fine and so the first claim was uh, pretty clearly stated I did think, however, that the evidence on that first point is kind of esoteric. We have a poet who's telling us how important the arts are. I have this question, where is the demonstration that kids can't express themselves without being taught art? Uh, that seems to be uh, uh, another one of those presuppositions built into the argument here. Now, that they could express themselves more effectively or that there is some additional benefit that comes from learning skills in art, that's fine but a uh, kid doesn't need to have a class in order to be able to draw or to dance or to sing. Um, so what you need to be telling us is that it's the organized teaching of those activities that produces these benefits, not merely the existence of art in itself. So I thought that that generic evidence on that first point was a little bit problematic. The strongest argument that you had was the second point where you're showing that uh, at-risk students who don't excel at academics or athletics need art as a way to pull them in and it gives them the ability to function more effectively in the schools and reach their potential. I thought that that was the strongest argument uh, that you had and I think what you need is some data that suggests that that's a large portion of the student population so it makes sense that, that we accommodate that group first as opposed to worrying about the small percentage of the population that participates in some of the athletic activities that are going on there. Um, the sports injuries argument on that last point I think is a little bit off track. I do understand why you've kind of put it in there as a way of diminishing the competing idea and its importance. <clears throat> What's not put in there is anything that talks about, well, for instance, on the second point, you said that people who uh, don't have any, uh, you know, um, stake in school, that they, uh, they need some kind of, um, what was the term that you used? Uh, not identification, but sugar, it's not going to come to me. Um, you know, some motivation for staying in school, that sort of thing. Uh, I didn't get any information that said that sports doesn't provide that. You said that it doesn't provide that, but I didn't hear any information that says that it doesn't provide that. And I, again, I think uh, based on the participation levels, it seems like that might be an important comparison for you to be making on that argument. Um, I, on the delivery issues, I do think you have a couple of things that you want to watch for. Uh, I was. I, I was listening to, um, Mario, I know you're back there somewhere, great, great one behind me, sorry. Um, 
I was listening to speeches earlier today in my public speaking classes, and we're doing delivery-oriented kinds of presentations. So we're supposed to do research and organization, all that kind of stuff, but the heavy emphasis is on delivery skills, so I've been kind of picking on things today. So I got it, I got it in my head, and I got one or two things that I got to pick on you about. You know, the, not big things, but... Limited eye contact, we've already talked about that. You get the nervous hands. You're, you're doing that a lot of hand washing while you're speaking. That's where, yeah, that's where all your anxieties come in. You need to channel that energy into something more effective that's going to help your public speaking. So gestures are fine, and that that would be a good place to do it. So you know, there, there's no advantage to using uh, sports, and the art is so encompassing and pulls people in instead of. You know, there's no advantage to sports, and you know, art is so. You know, you, you use the energy in your body to sell the idea as opposed to, you know, just contain it. And I, I understand it's anxiety inducing and people are uncomfortable, but you gotta find a way to channel that. All right, that wasn't a big deal of what we were working on. It was a little part and it's just something, like I said, that was hanging around my head from earlier today. Thank you.